Hello and welcome to this R for SaaS users video. I'm going to go ahead and open R Studio now. So what I've done is I've um, created some CSV files, I've written the code and I'm going to just step through the code and explain um, what I'm doing and let's give that a go. So I'm going to move this out of the way now, get that out of the way. Okay. and. So um, first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to clear the console. So I'm going to go here, edit, clear console, clear the console. This first command in my R program is to empty the environment. The environment is already empty because we've just opened R, um, but I'll run it anyway. So, okay. And then we're, we've got the library plier because we're going to use ddplyer later on. I think that needs plier, not dplyer. Um, so, uh, Plyer is a package that's um, easily available in R. Packages are over here, so we can see that we've already installed the package Plyer, and that's fine. Um, so the command library Plyer just tells R that um, Plyer is going to be required for this program. And if we scroll down now to Plyer, you can see it's ticked, and that's available now for this session. Um, so I've created a couple of CSV files. Uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to show you those files now. So let's have a look. Um, documents are, are versus SAS. So we've got something called input CSV, um, which is a series of customer numbers some positive numbers, some negative numbers, uh, one for each customer. It's got a flag in it, a one zero flag, um, and it's also got a postcode variable. That's the input CSV. We've also got a merge CSV, which has got postcode with the wrong name, P code, and then it's got some postcodes, and then it's got some ages, which, so we could merge the ages onto the other data set using postcode. Okay, so those are my two CSV files. So let's have a look what happens when we look at those in R. So I'm using control and enter here as I go step through the program. Um, so um, this one set working directory set WD is setting the directory where R will read files and write files as default. And this is uh, this command here creates a, an object called raw which is a table based on the CSV v file called input. So we go, go like raw is re, uh, raw equals read CSV, um, this file called input CSV, because that file input CSV is in the folder that we mentioned in set working directory, and it just reads it in. And what we can do is we can go down to here and we can type raw, and oh, it's a shame that it covered that like that. Okay, and then, um, you can see how our CSV has read in really neatly. Okay, so that's raw. And then here I'm just using get working directory just to show where the working directory is. So now we're going to do a little bit of data cleaning. And so now I mentioned at the outset that this was, I think of this as an R for SAS. So what, what, I, what I mean by that is I'm going to do the kinds of things that we do a lot in SAS, we're going to do it in R. So I'm not going to make much reference to the actual SAS code. It's almost assuming that you've, you do that and you want to know how to do it in, in R. Okay, so raw one, what we've done is we've created a new file called raw one in the memory within R. And let's have a look at raw one now. And we subsetted it. We, did a, we created a subset where this column called flag is set to one. So we started with raw with five observations of five variables, and then raw one just has three observations of five variables. So now raw two is a subset in terms of columns. So we want columns one, two, three, and five. Okay, so let's have a look at raw two now. And there it is. It's customer win lose postcode, it's now missing the flag. So we created these new files called raw one and raw two, where we subsetted the data. Okay, so now let's 
sort the data let's sort so we're going to take the raw which is the original file we're going to create something called raw 3 which is going to be the in, in order of flag okay so let's have a look at raw 3 and there we go uh, flag goes 00111 and um, it wasn't in that order initially so that's good um, let me just prove that to you the raw file uh -huh was in order 11100. Now, the next one is going to be raw3 is equal to raw. So this time we'll look at it over here. So raw3 is equal to raw, uh, but this time it's in the or customer number order, I think. Customer number, so it goes one, two, three, four, five. So that basically, I think, takes us back to the original order. Okay, so we're on to the last couple of steps already so this time we're going to merge okay so using control and enter m file so we're creating an object called m file we're going to read in this second data set called merge so let's have a look at that one down here all right m file my mistake so m file has got some postcodes and some ages okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to change column one so that it's not called P code anymore, it's called postcode. There we go. So let's have a look at that M file. And now postcode and age. That's great. So we did the column names. Raw M is a merge of raw three and M file. So think of raw three on the left, we'll call that X. M file on the right, we'll call that Y. We're going to merge it on postcode and we've said that all X is true. So we want all X, but we don't necessarily want all Y. Okay, so this is, uh, I think of this as a, I think this is a left join. So the data set on the left, we want everything from that and we want to merge on from the right and we might have some missing values on the data set that we're merging on from the right. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so quick reminder of, so we're merging raw three on the left, M file on the right. And so let's have a look at raw M. So raw M now has ages based on postcode. It's a little bit of a weird lookup, but um, we were able to locate postcodes for, uh, for uh, in the M file, we, we have, we have an age for B11XD, we have an age for B25AA, and we've merged those onto the right hand side of the data set called raw3. Okay, and then we're now going to create a variable called total in raw m. So let's have a look now at what raw m looks like. So we've now got this total, okay, um, and on the right hand side we've got for the first row totals 500, for the second row 500, 200, 300, 200. Now, what we're gonna do in the next step is we're gonna summarize by flag. So we're gonna to total up this new variable called total according to this other variable called flag. So let's do that now. Um, so what do we expect to happen? Well, zero looks like it's gonna be a 500 plus 300. So zero should be 800. 1 is 500 plus 200 plus 200, so that looks like it's going to be 900. So let's just check. So we've used this ddply on raw m. We're summarizing it by flag, and we've created a new variable called tot, which is the sum of the old variable tot. Okay, so let's see what sum looks like. 0 is 800, 1 is 900. That seems to have worked. And then finally, we're going to export some data. So if I click up here, right table, I've just created a new table in the working directory, um, which is remember, the way up here, set working directory. So in our working directory, we have now created a CSV called sum. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look for that then. So, uh, SAS versus R, R versus SAS. 
Sun. No, where was that? That was a CSV called Sun. Okay, and there it's got headings, flag, and total. It's got row numbers, you might not want that. Um, so let's go back to here. And let's do, I'm going to do a, a, a text file now, slightly different, just to ring the changes. So we output a text file, and this time we've said row names equals false. And here's our sum text. And we no longer have the row names, so we now have um, zero has been aggregated to 800, one has been aggregated to 900, and we've exported it as a text file. Okay, so thank you for watching my first SAS versus R video. I've got some ideas for things that we can elaborate on here. Please post questions below. Um, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching my video.